Hello everyone, this is Redact, and this game is called Suzerain. Last episode, we made a graph for ultimate power. Let's see what the opposition reaction is going to be about that. I'm sure they're going to accept it without any complaints. Right, okay, so there's something going on over here. It's fine. It's going up north. Anything? Right, what's happening here? Read the report from Borin. Red Youth Leader publicly announces they will not recognize emergency decree. Well, you're going to have to. The leader of the Red Youth has publicly announced through local newspapers they will not recognize the emergency. He has also declared the Red Youth is not and never was the terrorist organization. In response, known Red Youth headquarters were promptly raided and terrorists were arrested by the police. Yes. You must all respect my authority. So the Workers' Party of Blue D arrested. The Audit Intelligence Agency reported the leader of WPP was seen in direct contact with an ex member of the band, the Blue Dish Freedom Party. They were later detained on suspicion of working with the BFF. Hours after his arrest, the ex BFP member protested the incident and declared he would join the BFF and bring many Blue Dish people with him if the state continues to de detain innocent Blue Dish people. This comes right after the declaration of the new emergency decree. Confirmed suspicions of their connection and further investigations were started. Both men were, were arrested on terrorism charges. Yeah, man, you shouldn't be doing the stuff you're doing. What did you think was going to happen? I think I was just going to sit idly by. Read the report. Okay. Ocasio condemns emergency. The Ocasio ambassador condemned the emergency and demanded answers from Swordland. Before leaving the capital, we announced that President Dwight Walker is working on a counter embargo. Cripple the, the swordish economy. We don't need your investment anyway. Emergency decree started to be implemented. After the declaration of the new emergency decree, implementation of new laws has begun. Government workers, the swordish police force, swordish armed forces and other agencies have been informed of the next steps. Will some departments be restructured to accommodate new requirements? You will all do as I say. Alright. Yeah, here we go. We'll leave Radical to the end because that would be good. Sword and declare state of emergency. So I declare the emergency will be declared for the entirety of Swordland. The state has also declared a trade embargo on Arcasia, United, Contana and Rumberg, severing all diplomatic ties with them. Decision made after the bloody events that broke out against Swordland. In accordance with Articles 57 and 58 Constitution, the state holds the right to order the, for these measures to be in a situation of emergency like we have today. So it comes as no surprise to the recent escalations in violence around the country, many of which were suspected to be of Arcasian and United Contan origin. With the expansionist northern power neighbouring our borders and finding separatists within our borders, both superpowers using Swordland as a chessboard, Sordon had to respond one or way or the other. Okay. Geopolitical. International response to the emergency declaration in Swordland. Eyes and Nation reported they are watching Swordland with worry. Occasion President Dwight Walker condemned the declaration of emergency as well as the events leading up as well as the events leading up to the event. Okay. Well United Contanium leader Mayan Mayanyev said this was not a good sign for a good leader. Whatever. Well, you shouldn't be meddling in my affairs. Among the national neighbours of Solon, only the Republic of Wehrland seem to be approving the Swordish government's attitude, while other neighbours, Magnolia, Rumberg, Lesbia and Vagsland, have mentioned their disapproval. Well, we'll see, won't we? Emergency would destroy our economy? Yeah, probably, but it's their fault. Meddling in our affairs. As the emergency was declared today, the effects in the swordish trade has already been seen. A quick dive in the sword, swordish friend's value doesn't need any point to be proven. Swordland is an unstable trade partner in its current state. Declaring emergency is not exactly a good way to invite investors to your country. There are a few possibilities. Either Government Rain doesn't care about his fellow countrymen or doesn't care about the economy. Or worse, both. No, I only care about power. Swordland today. Rain focuses on internal peace. Yes. Sources informed us the talks within the Reform Committee isn't going fruitful among the chaotic situation in Swordland. 
Green Palace is speaking of plans to focus on immediate matters like defending our nation from internal and external threats. We hope that in difficult times like now, with riots and attacks against our state, our needs of people will hopefully be answered and peace will prosper. There will be peace if they stop doing what they're doing. According to sources, President Rain has already put forward a plan. He's reportedly stepped up against strong opposition within the government, showed his intention to focus on much more important security problems. Emergency declared. Emergency de declared all over Swordland, and the announcement has been conveyed through all official channels. Frankly, it was about time. Bill of Swordland is of the violence and terror on the streets after recent events. As a response to this, President Rain has shown his diligence by protecting the country from an unspeakable demise. But only hope the riots and the terrorism stop quickly. They will, they will do as they're told. Facing a worried nation on the brink of a potential dramatic spike in political violence, President Rain gave a public speech, pleading with the protesters to stay home to protect the stability of the nation. Reasons for the emergency were political violence initiated by the Red Youth and Young Swords as well as Blue Deer separatists that worked inside the Workers' Party of Blue Deer, all which were recognised as terrorist organisations, which they are. So the Workers' Party of Blue Deer was banned from politics and recognised as a national security threat. Head of the police, Mr. Greisler, said all members and affiliates of the Red Youth, Young Swords and WPB will be held accountable and brought to justice, as they should be. No place for separatists or left or right-wing extremists, yes. The state will quickly or swiftly take care of the situation and eliminate all terrorist threats. We ask our citizens to be patient until the state reassures us that we can continue with our lives as normal. Very soon. Reference and away from the annual Benfi Festival. Well, that Benfi is the... Isn't that the food or something? Or was it something else? I can't remember. There was some something like that. Okay, what are the radicals? What are they saying? Democracy, there never was democracy. There's only Redact now. We placed under state emergency in response to ongoing political violence. As Rain starts to warm his seat, we can see now for what he really is, an authoritarian like his predecessor, Colonel Saul. The act serves only to destroy the opposition against the president, who the state claims to be enemies of the state. Sick move against peaceful protests. It wasn't peaceful protesting there, was it? If they were just protesting peacefully, it would have been fine. As well as all opposing voices that have a platform. I haven't even started yet. I'm going to blackmail that dude. President Green stand, stands ready to bring down the insecure authoritarianism that once the founder of his party promoted, which inflicted many wounds to this country that never healed. But the party has now apparently seen the incoming threat to their rule with a decrease in their supporters and decided to finally take control with force. Whatever. And not as bad as I was expecting. Okay, so what happened in the journal? Yeah, national announcing. Yeah, I announced it. Okay. So what's going on with law and order? Media bias, judicial rivalry. Still have limited rights. Unfair electoral funding, court backlog. Oppression, yeah, yeah. Corruption, enlarged police force, wide ranging, uh, prisons overcrowded. Yeah, nation. Yeah, we're going to sort all this out. Organized crime, we need. We were doing, I think. Has not decided on how to handle the increased immigration. I've not got to it yet. I'll get to it. So we nearly bought on our railway that's going to save the economy pretty sure all right let's see what's going on here dinner with the business council members okay we were in Lachevin to work with the business council to assess weaknesses in the economy Simon organized the dinner with the affluent economic figureheads at Swordland we were escorted by heavily armed police forces as well as the presidential guard <laughs> When we arrived, the, the streets were quiet and police forces were patrolling everywhere. The emergency was felt in the vacant city. Together with Walter Tusk, Edith Agnock, Mikhail Avon and Simon Hall, Hall, we entered the renowned Esteria restaurant by the coast. 
Short blonde man whose embroidered pocket read manager greeted us and waved his hands in excitement as he told us how pleased he was to have us in his establishment. Beaming with pride, he led us to a private room and got us seated at a large table covered for the occasion with a maroon tablecloth. Chairman of the CBS. Lofferberg's... Oh, right, that's that guy. Co-chairman of the NBC. Minister of the Economy. Okay. Who is this? Who's this? Economist and banker? So is the chair... Oh, right, so he's the bank of Swordland, right? So she'll be on my side, hopefully. Well, she won't like what I've done, but anyway. He's a businessman. To Agla's economic planning. Okay. He's an economist. Alright. Quickly served by a group of servers. Walter spoke as they started taking our orders. Who's Walter? That guy. Right. I recommend the Lechevian salmon of this place, President. I know you're from Lechevian, but I bet you haven't tasted anything like that before. Should we just be a dick to him? I appreciate the advice, but I don't like salmon. Don't get me wrong, Mr. Tusk, but of course I've tasted this greatness many times here already. Hmm. I will just order it. Make him think that I'll do as he tells me, but I actually won't. <laughs> I ordered the salmon for the main course. The service took their notes and asked about the second dish. I will have... Yeah, salmon rice sounds nice. Servers placed glasses in front of each of us and served bread and water. They were done taking orders. They quickly left us alone in the private room. Several of the heavily armed guards were also inside of us, protecting every entrance and exit. Mr. President, I didn't have the possibility to thank you for coming today. Your presence means a great deal. Indeed, sir. It's an honour to dine with you, as it should be. I should sell tickets, really, shouldn't I? It's an honour to dine with you. Thank you, likewise. It's great to be here with the members of... It's an honour. Yes, likewise. We should thank Simon for organising this meeting. No need for that. I hope everyone enjoys the evening. Simon gestured the expensive-looking red wine bottle that one of the servers just brought to the table. Mr. President? Uh, expensive? Should, should I be accepting it? Simon is Minister of the Economy. Yes, no thank you. Should I have wine? Nod. Looks amazing. Yes. Yes. We want some service. Chateau de Valenco? Maybe four. Let's try it. So I pulled some wine in my glass and waited for me to test it before filling it up. I took a sip. The taste of the wine was immediately stimulating and delightful to my palate. It immediately reminded me of my visits to my father's vineyard when I was a little kid. Wine's sweet and bitter flavours exploded in my mouth. Oh my goodness. It's just red wine. The aroma of gooseberries and lilacs tumbled across my tongue. Here, yeah, yeah, yeah. And my mouth tingled with them long after I swallowed. How is it? Is the taste you're liking? Tastes like heaven. Reminds me of my father's vineyard. Fine balance. Nice sauce of gooseberries. I like it. It's fine. <laughs> Tastes like every other wine. Yes. I went. I didn't want to do, be too personal. So I'm just going to say I like it. You know your wine, Mr. Rain. I respect that. Simon filled up my glass. Putting everyone's glasses, Simon stood up and raised his glass. I'd like to raise a toast to all of you here today. We're meeting here tonight in difficult times, but I believe that with hard work, cooperation and trust, we will get through this period as well. I'd like to thank Mr. Rain again for his decisiveness in office. So we will get through this emergency period and come out stronger. Yes. I'd like to thank Mr. Tusk for being here today. His presence is an honour. Of course, my colleagues from the Business Council, Mrs. Agnock and Mr. Avon. Right, you, none of this would have been possible. They shrink to future cooperation and growth. For a prosperous swordland, everyone raised their glasses and toasted each other. After a couple more minutes, the servers arrived with our meals. When I tasted the food, I went back to my past. It reminded me of my childhood in this city. And though I couldn't recall much about my father, I remembered that he loved the food of Asteria. As all of us started eating, Walter stopped and looked at the guards before turning to me. I know we're in a state of emergency, Mr. Rain, but can't we even eat alone? What are they protecting here? 
They've already surrounded the whole restaurant. They have to be prepared for everything. I can take them out if you want, Mr. Task. Hmm. Do I think one of these people is going to, like, try and assassinate me? Hmm. It's a necessity. There's nothing I can do about it. They have to be prepared for everything. Um... Yeah, just leave us alone. Just go outside or something, guys. Guys bowed their head and went outside. Wolf just sighed in relief. So how do you find the food of the best fine dining restaurant here in Lachevin, Mr. President? Not a big fan, but I admit it's very tasty. Fine food is like fine art, but this particular one is a masterpiece. It's okay. This can't get old. It's an experience. Not a big fan of fancy food. Yes, I'll say I'll be good. I'll be nice. Know exactly what you mean. Art is something else. It embodies so much about us and the world surrounding our lives and food. There's an art of everything. The art of making money, food, wine, and love. Oh my goodness. How are these things going in the Maroon Palace? The pressure. <laughs> making love. How are those things going? That's a very personal question. The pressure must be increased after you attended the funeral. The pressure was already high. Not much has changed. It did, but it was the right decision. I have to say the future is looking good. It's tough, but the new laws will fix it. It's the right decision. Boss, I didn't mean to criticize your decision. As we conversed with Mikhail, I heard Walter raise his voice in an apparent argument with Edith and Simon. We both stopped to listen. Ocasio knows the right way of doing business. Their approach to the world is real and raw. I prefer that cutthroat approach in comparison to the niceties. Well, I mean, it's a nice country to visit too. I've traveled there often in business trips. The attitude on all countries are nice to visit if you have the cash. Stay silent. Money does turn the world around. Travel is, le is the least you can buy with it. Certainly not all. Yeah, stay silent. Don't really want to say anything. Mikhail joined in. Certainly depends on what you're looking for. Cultural tourism doesn't require a fancy hotel. Last time I went somewhere for that sort of thing, it was at university. And then, and then we had a wild time thanks to Conraf's connected entourage. Also... And uh, Walter is taking it down the rabbit hole again. By the way, I saw that the construction of the railway has already started. I have concerns about the company. I hope they do a good job. Why do you have concerns? Why would you care? Are you one of the comp you were one of the competition? Is that why? Trying to talk shit about your your competition? Don't know. That project will surely boost our economy if done correctly. The mood is already becoming positive. We congratulate Mr. Rain for being, starting such a massive project. Thank you for the support. Thank you for your support, yeah. Of course. Mr. Holder deserves some credit, of course, our great economy minister. Is there, <laughs> is there a joke coming? Why? I thought you said you were great at economy. He laughed. I heard that you bought a new villa, Simon. I don't comment on rumours, but I make an exception since we are among friends. It's true. Hmm. More black man material, maybe. New villa is a bit much, especially in this economy where people are suffering. You're doing a great job, you say you deserve it. Where is this property? I want to find out. Small seaside villa at the outskirts of Conriat. It's just as modest house with a swimming pool and a small golf course in the past. <laughs> <laughs> Modest house with a golf course. Okay. Great city to buy real estate in. Conriat is seeing a surge of investments. <laughs> You've been sarcastic with me. It's a great city. That's a good idea. Yeah, it's good. And now I know where it is. I can I can blackmail you later. Underhall Construction made a fortune contracting houses there. Where there is demand, there is supply. The market rules supreme as always. Edith, who was sitting to my left, gently put her hand over my arm for a few seconds. Come on, let's not talk about finance or politics for now. We came here to relax. Turn to Walter and Simon. Isn't that right, gentlemen? They nodded at her and took a sip from their drinks. She slightly leaned towards me. So, Mr. Rain, why don't you tell us what's behind that strong character of yours? I heard that your father was a very wealthy man. Would you say that he contributed a lot to your success? 
didn't contribute much. My success had nothing to do with that. It certainly helped. Money opened a lot of doors. We had money, but we weren't happy. My success had nothing to do with that. Yeah. Of course not. You worked hard after all. Uh, you worked hard for it. After all, money can't buy diligence. I never met your family, Mr. President. How are they doing, if you don't mind me asking? We don't talk much since I became president. They're doing great. We have no problems. Good to hear. Your son must be very proud of you. Family is everything. My advice would be to make sure that Frank has a solid relationship with you. He is your future, after all. I'm doing my best to be a good father. He seems somewhat introverted. He's going through a teenager period. Difficult to connect with him. He's a little shy. Why do you even care? He can handle himself. He doesn't need anyone else. Yeah, he's a little shy. Yeah. Wish that was my son's biggest problem. Darren seemed to be doing fine. I saw that his yacht party in Benfi made the local news. Well, the rascal didn't even ask permission to use the yacht. He just took it. Basically stole it. Good news is that I finally convinced him to go to university. He will study economics in Lachevin Business School. Good choice. Having a degree in Swordland separates you from the rabble. You especially need people who understand economics. Maybe your son would be a great future economic economist. Economist. I wouldn't count on that. <laughs> but I agree, we need more economists to enter politics. In fortune that Edward Alfonso was the only leader who actually studied economics. He turned to me. Not that I mean anything against you, Mr. Rain. Look at what he calls. Studying doesn't get you to the finish line. Alfonso was an inspirational reformist. We were in a mess because of him. Political family nearly destroyed us. Mikhail, what did you just say to me? <laughs> yeah, studying doesn't get you to the finish line. True, but I think it's ambition that brought him down. Too many big changes in the short time frame. Correction. It wasn't his polis policies that destroyed him. It was the old guard. What do you mean? Threaten the economic power base over the country for a vast privatization plan. They removed him and backed you after. Oh, just stop with the conspiracy theories. I think we've had enough drinks. Everyone went quiet. After a long silence, followed by some chit-chat, Walter ordered a bottle of whiskey. So that's one good-looking bottle. Where this bought one of the finest Arcasian whiskeys, it was time for a toast. Yeah, I'll do a taste. I raise to our health and happiness, to a constructive and beneficial future, to our wealth and success, to an equal society without class differences. Yeah, constructive, beneficial future. May the differences be set aside for a good future. Say hope dies last to the future. Raised. I think it's time we call it a night. He'd have stood up. Most of us were a little bit tipsy at this point. I want to thank you, Mr. President, for joining us, and you and Simon for putting all this together. Thank you for all being here. Thank you, Edith, for joining with a bunch of ugly rich men. Thank you all for being here. It was great. Thank you. Thanks for being here. After bidding our farewells, we slowly walked out the restaurant. The moon was shining bright as everyone except Walter left in their luxury cars. Oh, no. Oh, no. President, a moment alone, please. He gestured at the guards and then called me inside the small VIP lounge. Follow him. Okay, I'll talk to you. Usually the Loffenberg spokesman doesn't talk directly comment on the administration, but I'd like to say a few things since it was a special evening. Sure, if you have... Um, I'm all ears. Go on then. We're really concerned about the state of emergency. We found ourselves worrying about the future. We need stability for business to function. So if you want us on your side with our capital, there are a few requests on our end. Walter lit his cigar and took a few drags before continuing. Many of the group are disappointed in the economic direction that you took by promoting an inefficient planned economy. The promises made during the election had to be held. hell. We're certainly interested in maintaining a good relationship with Loffenberg. I couldn't care less. We don't share similar interests. Yeah. We're interested in maintaining a good relationship. In that case, we can move towards a better future together. He looked me in the eye. He rejected our previous discreet offer to pick underhaul construction for the execution of the first mega infrastructure project. 
It's actually led to disappointment in the group. We're aware of the upcoming tax meeting and it would be a step in the right direction if private corporations would get a tax cut. To boost our economy with job correction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Trickle down economics. It always works. And the positive side of it would be our support in the administration throughout the entire term. I will give large private corporations a tax reduction. I will make tax decisions objectively. I can't promise you anything. Oh, let's not be hasty. The recession will end if Lothenburg is on your side, President. Why can't we all just be friends? Maybe we can. I'll see what I can do. Not promising anything. Excellent. Glad to hear this. The group wants a private corporation tax cut and privatization in healthcare and education. Well, we might do... I don't... I won't privatize healthcare. But education we could privatize based on that report that I read. And a private corporation, we may not do that. I have. To, I will give a private corporation tax cut. Uh, no. Sorry, I'm not going to do that. That's a shame. I did offer you a pre peace branch. There was an awkward silence. Okay, I'm going to crush you then. Either way, President, we are here. Oh, we didn't even say Mr. President. Okay. We're here and always ready to work with you. Change your mind. Don't forget that. I will think about it, but not now. Walter left and Serge came to pick me up. Enter the car. Enter the car and we drove to a resident in Lachevin. Serge took the seaside route. Right, so there's some news. Let's, um, let's read the news. Bill on the rights of work is being drafted. Grand National Assembly of Solon will vote on a bill on Thursday to protect workers' rights. It's the most ambitious pro-labour legislation decade. See, those, those oligarchs are not going to like this either. Which one USB representative dismissed as the worst bill in the Assembly? Oh dear. Workers' Protection Act and strong support from both the... PFJB and the NFP as well as Labour leaders. Well, we'll see whether that works out. Establishing minimum wage, earning guidelines and overtime work, safety and protection guidelines. Sends the rights of workers to all migrants, acknowledging the rights as workers. Hmm, not sure I want to do that. Is it legal for corporations to force workers to do unpaid overtime work? Hmm. Cost for firms may increase 50% if they have to treat the workers according to proposed laws. Despite the bill coming from the governing USP, it faces huge opposition inside the party. Okay, we may not sign that one off. Because it meets with the Business Council. Had a, had a meeting behind closed doors, continue with dinner. Agenda was not disclosed. Contents will remain a secret, but it can expect that President Rain has discussed the future economic plans of its administration as well as listened to the concerns of leading industry figures. The outcome of the meeting will hopefully arrive quickly with positive developments and more transparency compared to today. They're not going to get their tax cut. More mine disaster. Yeah, we read about that. That was a shame. 112 dead. Wow. Neglect of the NIDA mining group. Hmm. I have to think about that one. I think we're finishing here. We'll read up on all this stuff next time. I don't know where the game will actually save, so we'll see about that. What's going on here? Budget allocation. Okay, so we'll do the budget allocation next episode. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it, and I will see you next time. Take care, everyone.